I'm Michael Eisenberg, a urologist focused on men's health. Cycling has been around for over a century. And throughout those years, it's always been a great way to exercise and stay healthy. It's low impact, easy on the joints, and a fun way to increase your heart rate for those cardiovascular benefits. And with the evolution of e-bikes, people are choosing to cycle more and more as an environmentally conscious mode of alternative transportation. We stay active with cycling for a long list of reasons, and its health benefits are on the top of that list. Today, we'll be focusing on the bicycle saddle and the potentially dangerous health issues associated with what we call too much time in the saddle. After all, with any physical activity, your health and safety should be your top priority. During this video, we'll dive deeper into the health problems associated with traditional bicycle saddles and how they affect both the male and female anatomy. Let's first compare what happens when a person sits on a chair versus a traditional bicycle saddle. When we sit on a chair, the pressure is put on our ischial tuberosities, or simply put, our sit bones, which is the proper weight-bearing region for our bodies. As you can see, sitting correctly puts little to no pressure on the nerves and arteries that supply blood flow to the penis for men and the clitoris and labia for women. This area is known as the perineum. The perineum is the outlet of the pelvis and contains vital nerves and arteries that supply the genitals. When sitting on a bicycle with a narrow saddle, or one with a nose or a bump or a cutout in the middle, the pressure from the sit bones then shifts to the perineum, thus resulting in pressure on the nerves and arteries that supply the genitals. The distribution of weight in the perineum and the compression is the main culprit for loss of sensation and other severe problems associated with the traditional saddle. Men and women commonly experience numbness and tingling or the feeling of the genitals falling asleep due to the constant nerve compression. While in some cases, Men also have experienced temporary, prolonged erectile dysfunction due to the pressure on the pudendal nerves and arteries. For women, the constant forward pelvic rotation leads to persistent pressure on the soft tissue, such as the clitoris and labia, causing swelling and pain. These saddle-related health issues have been studied for years, but sadly, the facts have been ignored. That's why we're here today, to highlight a few of these issues the cycling world really became alerted to the potential problems of cycling with this cover article, Bicycling Magazine in the late 90s, which showed this link between erectile dysfunction and cycling. There was a nice study in the late 90s out of Norway that showed a clear link between cycling and impotence in men. Another study from the Massachusetts Male Aging Study showed that more intense cycling, they defined it as more than three hours a week, showed a much higher risk of erectile dysfunction among those men. And then looking at more objective data, there was a beautiful study right around the turn of the century where they measured blood flow to the penis and found blood flow to the penis dropped 80% when on a nose saddle compared to just a slight 20% decrease when men use a noseless saddle. Another study just looked at the rates of erectile dysfunction between men that cycled and men that didn't and found that men that cycled had a two times higher risk of erectile dysfunction. These studies don't just apply to men. There's also studies in women that show that more cycling can lead to decreased genital sensation, higher risk of numbness and pain. Actually, up to two thirds of women cyclists report these symptoms, which is a frightening number. So the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, or NIOSH, became very concerned about this, given the fact that there's many professions that rely on cycling as a key part of their work, for example, patrol officers. So when they surveyed men that were patrol officers, they found that 90% actually reported groin numbness. And when they gave them noseless saddles, the symptom improvement was so great that at six months, 90% of these men wanted to continue to use those saddles because it was such a much more comfortable experience. This data was so overwhelming that the director of the Institute actually recommends using noseless bicycle saddles in the prevention of general numbness and sexual dysfunction in workers who bicycle as part of their job. Again, improving the quality of life for workers is an important part of workplace safety and health. The research clearly demonstrates there are major problems with traditional bike saddles even those with the cutouts, and that there is a medical solution. Almost every cyclist has acknowledged these issues with their saddles, as they constantly strive to find ways to alleviate the pressure and pain to their genitals. Some have resorted to wearing padded shorts, while others have added various gel pads to their existing saddles. Unfortunately, these temporary Band-Aid solutions can sometimes lead to other lasting problems. For instance, those padded shorts can increase sweating and irritation in the genital area, while those gel pads tend to bunch up, causing further pressure on the vulnerable regions. No one should be embarrassed to discuss these issues. 
The smart way to address these problems with the saddle is to once again look at how we sit on a chair. Similar to how we are seated on a chair, an ideal bicycle seat would ensure that cyclist's sit bones are in full contact with the seat, leaving the genitals free and unobstructed, while the nerves and arteries are unrestricted. Thus, the cyclists support themselves on their sit bones, instead of exerting undue pressure on the perineum where the genitals, nerves, and arteries reside. In conclusion, alleviating any prolonged pressure on the genital area is obviously ideal, a no-brainer if you will. In my professional opinion, I recommend that all cyclists of any gender choose a seat that is wide, noseless, and flat. The seat should be wide enough to engage the sit bones so that the rider's weight is shifted back from the genital perineal area. Furthermore, the seat should have no nose, no bump, no cutout, thus removing any area of potential pressure on the genital perineal area. The ideal bike seat is the V-seat. The V-seat is a noseless, bumpless bicycle seat with an ergonomic design. It supports the rider's weight on the sit bones while eliminating the pressure on the genitals. The V-seat is a solution to the problem and the clear choice for all cyclists everywhere. Choose the V-seat for your fitness, your comfort, and most importantly, your health. Enjoy a safe ride for the rest of your life. Your genitals will thank you.